Today we have the privilege of introducing to you one of the main speakers of the conference in Kiev, Professor John Lennox. He's a mathematics professor from the University of Ex Oxford. Thank you very much that uh, you would like to come. It's and, my uh, pleasure. <laughs> you know, yesterday at your speech, you were talking about values and uh, identity. Will you elaborate on that? The question of values is central mm. to humanity and everybody, including myself, we're all looking for significance. Mm. And one of the problems with our contemporary society is that because a secular philosophy has banished God and has lost the concept of the, uh, the, concept of the transcendental, it has lost its orientation, it's lost its compass bearing. Mm. Because for me, it is very clear that if we fail to see ourselves as being created in the image of God, we lose a large part of what has shaped for centuries our cultural identity. Now, of course, that doesn't prove there is a God. I believe that there are strong reasons for believing there is a God. And therefore, my purpose is to articulate those reasons in the public space so that people can see that it's intellectually credible to come back again to those Christian foundations in order to discover that value which we are given by being told that God created us in his image. It seems to me to be a very profound idea mm -hmm. that God not only created and sustains the universe, but specially thinking of human beings, that we are thinking persons we're made in the image not of something less than us, but of someone greater than us. And that gives us a stability. And if we lose that, we lose our sense of value. Because value then becomes a matter of personal opinion. And unfortunately, when that happens, then power tends to determine value. And we see examples of that in our societies, both in relatively recent history and today. You know, people nowadays, they speak about uh, value, relativity, and uh, like there is no absolute yes. uh, absolute value of yes. anything. Uh, and also that science and um, faith is not something that can go together. Mm -hmm. But it uh, looks like you manage to have both. How, how, how is it for you? Well, that's, those are two separate questions. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take the first one, okay. the notion that there are no absolutes. Mm -hmm. Nobody lives like that and nobody really believes it. Mm. I find that everybody believes in absolutes. If you tell them there's a lecture at two o'clock, they'll usually be there at two o'clock. Yeah. And in fact, my experience goes to show, although it's not absolutely true, that people are only relative in areas that they consider not to be important. Yeah. If you get a mountaineer climbing a mountain in Norway, they will have an absolute concept of how strong the rope needs to be. <laughs> they will not be relativists yeah. when it comes to the, the rope that's supporting them. So it's very important to see that in order for society to function even, people do, they give the game away because they show they believe in absolutes that are independent of you and me. Now, of course, I believe the reason for that is that the universe is created by an intelligent God who holds everything together. Mm. As for science and faith in God, well, many people see them as opposed. I don't for some very simple reasons. First of all, the history of science. Science exploded in Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries. And C.S. Lewis once wrote a very good summary of why that happened. He said men became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in the lawgiver. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ashamed of being both a scientist and a Christian for the very simple reason that arguably Christianity gave me my subject. Now, the reason that many people think that science and God or science and theology are opposed mm -hmm. is that they don't understand either the nature of science or the nature of God. For instance, if we had a Ford motor car here, and I said, look, I'm going to offer you two explanations of that. One is the laws of internal combustion and engineering. The other is Henry Ford. If I said to you, choose between those explanations, you would say that's absurd. Mm. You need both. Yeah. 
but they're different kinds of explanation. The law of internal combustion is a law. Mechanical engineering tells us about the mechanisms. Henry Ford is an agent that designed the whole thing. And if you want to get a full description, you have to have a scientific law mechanism description on the one hand and an agent description, Henry Ford, on the other hand. And it's exactly the same with God in the universe at the higher level. God is not in competition with science as an explanation. God is an explanation of why there is a universe for science to be done on. Mm. So there's no competition at that level. And that's how I begin to answer the question. In addition, I think a lot of problem comes from the fact that people don't understand what we mean by God. Mm -hmm. Many scientists, for instance, think that I believe in a God of the gaps. I can't explain it, therefore God did it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if that's the way you think of God, you will put God and science in opposition. But for me, God is not the God of the things I can explain. No. He's the God of both the things I can explain and the things I can't explain. When Newton discovered the law of gravity, he didn't say, wonderful, I've got a law, I don't need God. No, he went and wrote the most brilliant book of the history of science, the Principia Mathematica, hoping that the thinking person would come to believe in God because of this wonderful discovery. And it's true to life. If I go into an art gallery and see a painting, the more I understand of painting, the more I can admire the genius of the painter. Mm. And so the more I understand of the universe, the more I admire the genius of God, not the less. So for these fundamental reasons, it seems to me that it is absurd to think that God somehow and science are mutually exclusive. And my last question is, how is it to be a Christian in a uh, like, uh, very secular uh, environment as uh, Ox Oxford University? Well, it's very so. interesting. Yeah. Because <laughs> I find, as you know, that Oxford is the heartland of the new atheists. Richard Dawkins, Professor Dawkins, Professor Peter Atkins, and a number of others are very much very vocal in promoting this new aggressive kind of atheism. So I find it a very vigorous climate and I feel that I don't agree with the idea that secularism is the default position and everybody else has got to justify themselves. Mm. I think there needs to be an open, friendly public debate where we put both sides of the case. After all, the two sides have existed for millennia in the ancient Greek world, there were basically two major explanations of the universe. The one was the universe explains itself. Mass and energy is all that exists. That was the view of materialism. And it was believed by the atomists like Leucippus and Democritus and so on. And the others, like Plato and Aristotle and Socrates, believed there was transcendence. Mm -hmm. And those two views come up to us through the centuries and they're still alive and well. And I engage at uh, a high level in discussing these things because I think it's very important for both professors and students to see mm -hmm. that atheism, naturalistic atheism, is not the only intellectually respectable position. Theism, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is far more intellectually respectable mm -hmm. because the very fact that science can be done, for me, points towards God. After all, the atheist position is that the human mind that does the science is the brain. What's the brain? It's the end product of a mindless, unguided process. Well, I find there's something fundamentally absurd there. If I thought that my computer was the end product of a mindless, unguided process, I wouldn't trust it for a moment. <laughs> so for me, one of the big objections to this atheist interpretation of the universe is that it undermines the rationality that we need to do science. And that has nothing to do with my belief in God. Marvelous. Thank you very much, Professor. It's my pleasure. <laughs>